All right, welcome everyone. We are here to learn about a whole bunch of features within Google Docs itself, as well as some helpful, useful um, Chrome extensions. We'll talk a bit about the read and write toolbar. It is so prevalently used in Alberta uh, that it's worthy to share this tool, not only as teachers how we can use it, but especially our students who may be at home, if they have the Chrome browser, they can, and your school division has this Chrome extension, they'll be able to use it and support, be a bit more independent and self-directed uh, with uh, reading and with writing. Um, so lots of different things we're gonna cover here today. So welcome, so why don't we get started? All right, I'm gonna just give, bear with me one second. I have a couple of uh, takeaways, digital takeaways for you. This is not elegant. Uh, my interest in getting started and supporting all of you uh, I've not kind of ATA versioned them. I also teach a, a part-time uh, course, an undergrad course at Concordia University of Edmonton to the year two students with educational technology. And so I'm gonna share with you a couple of links just as a digital takeaway. Um, there are two links that I'm gonna refer back to. This is kind of, they include some, um, there's one link in there to this page. I've got another one that kind of focuses a bit on feedback. Uh, and then that overlaps with Google Docs uh, a lot. So providing feedback to students in those Google Docs of various tools related to that. And so I'm going to post uh, two links in the group chat if you wish to have that. Um, but we're just gonna get started here with a, um, with a sample Google Doc. So I'm gonna share with you Let's see if I've got one here for you. A sample Google Doc that has some text in it already. Let's see if I've got that. All right, so I'm going to share with you, if you want, sample Google Doc. There is a link in there that should make you, force you to, when you click on it, to make a copy okay of this google doc so you can either just start there with some text and things already and some stuff already in this google doc that's how i'm going to be going uh through this session um however if you don't want to if you want to just start a brand new google doc you can do that too and while we just get started let me just talk to you a tiny bit about organizing your google doc you can start a google doc as easy as just typing in docs dot new it's the fastest easiest way to start a brand new google doc docs.new of course you're going to be signed into your google account your division google account it's the fastest way i know of to start a brand new google doc but where is it organized well it's not organized yet uh, so another option we have i'm just going to open up a new tab and i'm going to go into my google drive so drive.google.com because another handy way to do this is to go in either create a new folder let's say i'm going to create a folder and i'm going to just call it literacy you can call it whatever you want and where is it? so i went to the new button in the upper left of google drive and i click new folder so in that folder or any folder you can also go new and you can create any one of these google type documents uh, right from within here then it's in a particular folder Okay, does that make sense? So I'm going to click on, if I click on a new Google Doc in here, it'll be in this literacy folder uh, already. But let's say you've already, you're already outside here. Uh, I'm, in a, I'm already in this sample document. Um, did anybody have success clicking that link to make their own copy? Uh, if you could give me an indication in that. Okay, good. So if you want to, after the fact, organize it into a, a Google Drive, folder you can do that and you do that just after the title here you'll see a star and after that you'll see a folder and that is a move button so i can now move that into a different folder aha i'm going to pop it into literacy that literacy folder i'm going to hit move it's organizing it boom it's moved it okay so now if i go back to this literacy folder let's see if it updates automatically it has to refresh remember that literacy folder i just made 
when I refresh my page, that's a little curvy arrow, by the way, uh, next in your browser, bingo, there it is, now it's in here. So you can do that um, at any time. So I'm just gonna run off of that one, that copy of the Google Doc. Um, so let's take a look here, what we can do. Um, a, a piece I really like in Google Docs, let me just zoom in a little bit on this. And I've demoed this before if you've been in some of these sessions, but it's a handy feature to get some text down on the page for students who may have difficulty typing for whatever reason. Cognitive disabilities, maybe they're just not a good typer. You wanna get some ideas down. There is a voice, there is a voice to text feature called voice typing. And if you haven't tried it, it's actually kind of a wild ride and it's really interesting. You may recall the days of the Dragon Dictation or software like that, where we had to train the software, you had to repeat some various phrases and train it to your voice. No longer, this is super accurate. And if you have a phone, a lot of people with their smartphone will be using these. Uh, my son, who's now uh, in his mid twenties, uh, when he was in school, he a lot of times would like to use um, the microphone right in his uh, apps to do this. So kids are familiar with this, kids are comfortable with this. Um, so if you just click on tools, voice typing. Has anybody here never seen voice typing before? Because it's pretty cool if you haven't seen it. But if you have, I don't want to completely uh, repeat it. So I'll go fairly quickly for those people uh, who have seen it already. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to hit this record button or hit this microphone button, I should say. It's not actually recording it. And if you haven't done this before, right up on the top left of your Chrome browser, Chrome's going to say, hey, can we use your microphone? And you'll say, yes, I'll allow it. So here we go. It turns red, by the way, before I click it, it turns red to turn on, and, it, and you have to hit it again to turn it off. This is the voice typing tool in Google Docs, period. New line. It is extremely accurate, exclamation mark. It also works in about 80 different languages, exclamation mark. New paragraph. Now, I don't know all the voice commands there are in here. There are, there are several voice commands. And uh, so you can, I don't know what those are, but what I do know is on this microphone, you can drag it around wherever you want. You can teach students how to do this, okay? Uh, and then hit the drop down arrow. This, as I said, works in about 80 languages. So lots and lots of different languages. So um, if you're a language teacher and you wish to help students vocalize and get their words down in French or Spanish, or for whatever reason, you have some ESL, ELL families, you wanna get some text down in their native language, uh, some ideas that, uh, that works very well. Now it gets a little bit messy um, on, it gets a little bit messy in uh, Google Docs because if you're not, you know, you're gonna be missing some punctuation and some capital letters, et cetera. So you can, after you're done, have the student go in and clean it up and edit. It's actually a pretty good activity when I think about it, uh, having students do some revisions to their own voice typing. Voice type in something and then make sure you go back and focus on the capital letters. Um, and, uh, you know, for example, this tool shouldn't be capitalized. So I could go back and make some corrections, et cetera. So voice typing, super useful. Uh, in Google Docs, we can insert a lot of additional things to support literacy and content literacy. So one of them is an image. And I demoed this in the Google Classroom session, but um, inserting an image from the web. There's a web search right here within Google Docs. So you don't have to leave Google Docs to do that. And all the pictures are copyright free. So I'm going to choose Sloth. Sloths are cool animals. So why don't we just select one? I'll choose insert. And then it's very familiar for students uh, when they see that image in there to select it. And they can use these little dots, these handles, or the little button up top there to either resize or to rotate. All right. So lots of. Uh, now, what you can also do once you've got a picture in here, if you ever need, you ever find you're in a pic, you have a picture and you want to crop out a certain portion of it, that means you want to get rid of a certain portion of that picture. Uh, all you need to do in Google Docs is double click. Okay, now you see these crop, I'm going to click away, I'll do that again. So 
These are the blue dots and handles, but if I double click, I can now see these black cropping things. So I could crop out certain parts of this image and just, let's say I just wanted to close in on its face a little bit. Now I just click away, but check it out. If I double click on that, it's still there. It's just not shown, okay? So you can get it back if you want to, uh, and that's how you can crop out some stuff. Now, another feature in Google Docs that's really quite handy for being able to communicate and uh, some understanding and ideas is a drawing. So uh, I don't, it, it, if you haven't tried this before, insert drawing, let's try a new one. Now, uh, it's kind of like a paint program. There is a line tool, so various lines, even like a scribble tool. Um, I'll undo that. There's a shapes tool. So you can, there are all sorts of shapes here. Uh, let's get a sun going on. There's an image piece and uh, you can um, do that Google image search as well. So I can put whatever I want in this Google drawing here. And then at any point in time, uh, whenever I'm happy with it, I just hit save and close. Oh, here comes my car. It took really a little while for that one. And so I can hit save and close. And now it brings it into my Google Docs. So now I can do some writing about that, okay? Maybe some creative writing. If the kids click on the picture, we'll go back to the original. Hmm. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, so what they can do, I mean, I've inserted this as a regular picture, okay? But what you can also do with this drawing, if you double click on it, you go back into the drawing. So there's lots of interesting things you can do with that. You can put shapes and things that kids can even drag around and move around um, or add to, and then uh, hit save and close. And you can go back and forth between the drawing, the editing version, and just seeing it, and then doing some writing about it. Um, so that's a handy feature is the drawing. Now, for those of you who have families that have ESL, um, oh, can the kids make the picture? It depends if the students you're sending this to, the question was, can I make that picture bigger again? Um, well, it depends if you're sending this to students in editing version or if it's just a view only document where they're just clicking on links or whether you're sending them their own copy of this through things like Google Classroom. Um, um, yeah, so, okay, good. All right, so uh, another thing I wanna show you in Google Docs is you have a whole lot of fonts and take advantage of that. You'll see at the very top of this one, I've got a kind of a cool purpley one. So as I click in the Google Doc, you'll see that there are some fonts. These are, there are a few regular ones, but look out, look for the one that says more fonts. There are a whole bunch of fonts. You can make this interesting. Uh, to students and uh, hopefully not too confusing for them uh, or distracting. Uh, you, you know, they'll get some script font and then start typing what looks like really strange handwriting or something, and then you won't be able to understand it. But anyhow, uh, it is an interesting thing for you to be aware of. And what you'll see is all the ones that have a blue check mark are ones, yes, uh, June, all the ones that have a blue check mark are ones in your list in under my fonts okay you can get rid of ones in your my font or you can add in any new ones let's say you think let's scroll down and find a cool one here uh hey i want the lobster font that looks pretty cool so you can click on it it now turns blue it's now in your list pacifico looks pretty cool so any one of these that you want to click on are going to be added to your list okay and later on i'm going to show you an extension oh uh I don't think you can upload a Windows font uh, to Google. Google has its own separate font. So how did we get here? It says um, MMC Gibbon. Uh, so how did we get there? Well, we went to, I looked in my font, which by default would be Arial. I hit the down arrow for more fonts and I there's a whole bunch there, but now I choose this little more fonts. Does that make sense? You can see all kinds of fonts that are there. 
Uh, some people, for example, have asked, well, what about the uh, open dyslexic? I haven't seen one in Google Docs that is exactly like that. Or someone has asked about the American Sign Language uh, fingering fonts. I haven't seen that either yet, but um, you, you know, you could theoretically do a, a Google search for that. I haven't come across it yet. So there are some limitations. However, I'm gonna show you uh, what's called an add-on for Google Docs a bit later that will, um, that provides more fonts even than that. So we can look in there to see what's in there. So I can just hit okay. So now they're in my list and I can just um, take any text that I have put in. I can go and I can change it to a different one. Uh, let's say I want to change it to Oswald and I want to change the size from 11 to 18 and I want to change the color to a really cool bright green. Whoa, that's pretty bright at 9.24 in the morning, am I right? So you can really have some uh, fun with this and start to add some interesting things to it. All right, back to some academic rigor. We've done something fun, let's do something rigorous and really awesome, and that is the Explore tool. Has anybody tried the Explore tool? In the bottom right-hand corner of your Google Doc, look for something that looks like this. It is uh, like a little bit of a, yeah, in slides. Well, you'll see what it does in uh, Docs. It does a little bit different things, Tanya, in Google Docs, some really helpful things. It's kind of like a, a search tool or a research tool. And it's built right in. It looks like a little compass. When I click it, it brings this menu open on the right-hand side. So let, what I've done here in this particular example is I've put in a table. Um, and so how I did that was, um, I won't do it again, but I'll just show you how I did it. In case you want to organize a learning template. Um, yeah, exactly. Good point, Ken, um, on font choice. Okay, so insert table, and then you can make your table however big or small you want. It's a really handy way to start organizing some of that learning, whether it's text, images, various other things, web links, or otherwise, uh, Google Drawings, any of it, there's a handy way uh, to organize that with the table. So in this particular sample, and I apologize, for those of you who've been to the Google Classroom going further, you might be sick of this example. But I've done an example where we've done it in a class, we're gonna do some research about the parts of the plant. So I might say uh, up here, I would like to find plant leaves okay different types of plant leaves so what it's going to show me in the uh, in the explore tool is uh, there's a web search there's an image search and there's a google drive search so if you have anything in your google drive it'll show up if you have uh, it'll show the web-based images copyright free once again which is awesome and uh, web results so I can open up these, let's say the great plant escape plant parts. I click that and I think, hey, this is actually a really good website. I want to include this in my Google Doc for students to look at. I'll go back to it. Remember this one, the great plant escape? Watch what I can do. Watch this. I can drag this link right from here, right over inside my table or anywhere on my doc, really. But it's handy to so watch this. Click and drag drag, I'm going to let go, whoops, in the leaves website. See it? All right. So what you can do now, take a look at these web results. Do you see the little citation button? That It's a sort of a little uh, closing quote icon right next to all these. So watch what happens when I do this. I'm, I'm right near this uh, link here to the Great Plant Escape. If I click the citation button, boom, it puts a little number one and it puts a little a footnote at the bottom of the page. So right at a very young age, we can teach kids, they don't have to know exactly how to do footnotes, they can understand that when I find things from the internet, I can give credit to where I found it. Not everything on the internet is mine. So I can give credit to uh, and cite my source. And this is a very, very easy way to do it. So as far as images go, and I'm just going to, I'm just gonna hit enter. 
I could also insert a break, page break at any point in time. And you know what a keyboard shortcut is for that? Control, enter. Hold down control and enter, give you a page break. So you can start getting fluent and a little bit faster with some of these shortcuts as you're creating templates or learning activities with students or just for yourself. So I'm gonna go down here and now I'm in the pictures. I want to put a picture of this leaf into this box right here. Again, I can just drag it. See how my cursor, I haven't let go yet, but wherever I let go, boom, it's gonna bring it in. And it'll resize that picture to the width of the column. So it's not gonna blow up your document. So it's super handy way, practice this a couple of times. Um, ask, ask um, try this out. And you know what, these are not bad things to teach your students as well, whether you're doing some live teaching or whether you wanna use tools like Screencastify and record your screen showing students what to do. We'll come to Screencastify a little bit later as a feedback tool. So that, those are just a few features of uh, Google Docs. I've already mentioned the Google Drawings. Now, if you had already had some Google Drawings from elsewhere that you had saved, Perhaps you've been to, I always like to pump the tires on the black gold engaging students um, website because they have so many free templates like this. Okay, so I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna focus on the black gold website here today, but I am just going to give you this link. You can find in these uh, grade resources or the shared Google resources, loads and loads of templates uh, that can be used. Uh, some of them are in Google Drawings. And when you save those to your Google Drive, what I can do is something like this. I didn't make this. I already had it saved to my Google Drive. So remember how we inserted a drawing? Instead of choosing a new drawing, we can choose uh, from Google Drive. And then it'll look for other, we can either use the search button or it'll find other drawings files that we have in here that we could uh, insert. So for example, uh, this is Levels of the Forest. This was created by uh, one of the Concordia students that I work with. And um, so now I can bring in this Google drawing. And now students in this Google Doc, right in the Google Doc, um, they can open up this, uh, that didn't work. So let me go back to this one that I inserted. So they can double click on that drawing that they've inserted and they can now move it around. Uh, it's, a, it's a drawing that, they've ins that they have created uh, that they've got in their Google Drive. And now they can move things around um, on this Google Drawing and then they can close it and even do some more writing about it. So why would you bring a drawing into a Google Doc? Well, if you'd like to do some follow-up writing uh, about it. So that would be um, how to do that. So the citation technique for those who wanna see that again, let's say I want to um, look at a plant stem, I'm gonna open that explore tool and I can also get that explore tool in the tools menu, tools, explore. So it pops open and this time I'll type plant roots. So let's say I really love this website. At any point in time, I can, um, drag and drop these links. And at any point in time, here is in the web search, you can see this citation button. It does not work for images. Uh, in other words, when you do an image search, you, there are, there's not that citation feature. It just gives you the option to hit the add button and it'll pop it in wherever you want, but it doesn't give you that citation feature, unfortunately. So that is the Explore tool. Uh, the final thing I want to show you in this sample Google Doc here before we kind of switch gears for some other extensions and add-ons that can help is the, let me just, I'm going to just get rid of this, give myself a little bit more space uh, as well as this one, uh, is inserting an image now from a camera. Now, why on earth would we want to do this? Well, I'll tell you why. I'm going to just stop my video. Anytime you want students to digitize something on paper, uh, this is a handy way that they can do that through their webcam. Insert image from camera. 
If it hasn't asked you for permission, if you haven't done this before, this is my webcam, um, uh, it will ask you for permission first. But let's say I have a drawing on paper, or even maybe I've written a paragraph on paper. Imagine that. I can just take, I can just click on it like this, open up my camera, and I can choose this little camera button to take a picture. And if I can't reach that camera, little camera button with my mouse, let's say my mouse is over here, I can't do two things at once. The space bar also acts as the camera shutter. Try this out. And then anything you want, you can, I'll do this one, actually. Pick which one I want to insert, and bingo. Now it's in here. Make sense? So digitizing something, maybe it's a drawing, maybe it's a map, maybe it's a story diagram, maybe it's a graphic organizer they have filled out, maybe it's a paragraph, maybe it's some math that they have worked on. Uh, they can digitize that, turn my camera back on, they can digitize that. It's not perfectly scanned, but it's in. Now they can write about it. Remember how we can edit, uh, do you remember, um, do you remember how to uh, crop a picture? You can double click on it. And let's say I wanna get rid of some of this other stuff on the outside. I just wanna show a picture of this book. So I can get rid of some of the other fluff here. And then I'm left with just that, just that book, okay? So uh, a handy way to digitize things which you can then write about. So lots and lots of features. Before I go on to some more extensions that we can use in Google Docs, there are an add-ons. There's another feature I want to show you, and this is useful if you're writing a class newsletter or some communication home. Some of you may have uh, some families that where English is not their first language. So there is a pretty good um, translation tool here. So I can go Tools, Translate, Document. Now, what it's going to do, it's not going to change the current document I have at all. It's going to just make another copy. So let's say I have a lot of Filipino parents who speak Tagalog as their first language. Uh, you can go down to where it says Filipino. I don't know why it doesn't say Tagalog, but uh, you can go down to where it says Filipino. And then it's going to make a new copy. You can change that name if you wish to. But I'm just going to hit translate and watch this. New tab. So it's a new document. Here's my other one, it's still here in English. So it's gonna create this brand new Google Doc and give it to you in uh, Tagalog. Okay, so now I can share that with certain families who might need it or find value with that. And it's from what I've been told from the people who are uh, speak Tagalog is that this is pretty accurate. Now it's, it's fairly accurate and there are some of you who will dispute this. I know language teachers often really dislike Google Translate, okay? They say it's not very accurate. But if it makes the difference between communicating with home fairly well or not at all, um, it is a great start as Tanya has pointed out. So one more time, uh, whenever you're happy with your document, you'd like to translate it. Tools, it's under Tools. Translate document, okay? And then you can just pick your language you, let's say you've got somebody who's just come here from Vietnam. Let's go find Vietnamese. And I'm going to translate it. It'll pop it open in a new tab. What I'm not sure about is whether it puts it in that same folder that the other one was in. I'm going to check on that. So this is uh, in Vietnamese here. Um, this is the translated document. I don't know if it's perfect, but it is something right? Uh, it's something that can bridge that gap. And when you we're all working remotely, it might make a positive difference. Let me just see here whether that uh, file is being translated and put in the same folder. Nope, it's not being put in my literacy folder. But do you remember, let's say I've got this translated version. Do you remember how to move stuff to a different folder right from within Google Docs? Anybody remember? Unfortunately, uh, Jingles Cree is not listed in here. Uh, and that's a really unfortunate thing. I do know that there is work at the national level to get uh, Cree language brought into more technology tools. And I think that's a wonderful thing. 
so uh, once again, if you want to remember how to, yeah, so pull exactly. All right, you guys are quick, quick learners. Maybe you knew it beforehand. Just click that little folder next to your file and you can move it into wherever you want. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just close this uh, Vietnamese version and I'm going to close the a couple of other things here. My translated version, go back to this. So that's a pretty good start. Um, and I'm, well, I'm glad to hear that there's some new learning here for all of you. That's wonderful. What I'm going to do now, you know what? I'm going to just stop my desktop share because I'm going to do it again with uh, and make sure I capture the sound. Oh, there's more stuff, man. There's, uh, there's some great features here. I'm going to do the screen share again this time. I'm going to make sure I'm sharing my computer sound. All right, we're back. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to pop open the chat and manage participants. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some extensions and some add-ons um, that we can put uh, to also support literacy, okay? Um, the read and write toolbar is very, very commonly used. Uh, it's, it's a very common, um, probably 80, 90% of um, school divisions use the read and write toolbar. Would you agree with that, Ken? Would you, is that your experience in the South as well, that a lot of people have uh, the read and write toolbar? Is this something you ever used um, when you were in the classroom? Uh, yes, uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's pretty common for sure. It's something that all the school divisions seem to subscribe to for sure. So uh, specifically how much it gets used, um, uh, I think it depends again uh, a little bit uh, on the comfort level of the teachers. Awesome. Oh, I'm seeing some great sharing in the group chat as well. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, so what many people have this read and write toolbar, and as somebody pointed out, it's free for educators, uh, where the real magic is as well as when, it's, when students have it. So um, when a school division has it, they usually will push it out such that when you are signed in with your school division Google account into your Chrome browser, then you can have this read and write toolbar. Um, and there, it is a handy thing to show parents how to sign into the Chrome browser with their child's division account such that extensions like this show up. If somebody will remind me at the end of this session, my former colleagues at Edmonton Catholic uh, have created a video to show parents how to sign into, or students at home to show how to sign into the Chrome web browser so that they can get some of those extensions. So here's the purple puzzle piece. I'm just gonna open it up here. And in Google Docs, it has some really awesome functionality. There it shows up in here. There's a lot of functionality here. Probably the biggest one, the very common one, is being able to take that text and have it read. So when the toolbar is open, I take this, um, I take this text, I highlight it. Now I push, see this, this triangle, the two lines, and the square button? That's a play, pause, stop. In this sample collaborative Google Doc below, change the title to something different. Okay, so it works very well and it can help students a lot. In fact, I'm going to give you a, a URL in the group chat where you can share this with parents. It's a resource created by, as I mentioned, um, the group, the school division I used to work with. ECSD read and Right. This was created by two former colleagues, Trish Ropey and Dane Sedonik. And so if you uh, click on that, if I go into that website, it's a really handy. It's a really handy site that will show you and parents and anybody exactly how all of these things work. Remember that Chrome login I was telling you about? You can share this link, this website address with families and now they can start using it. But let's look at a bit more of the functionality for ourselves here, just so you can see what's possible with the Read and Write Toolbar. So in addition to the text-to-speech, there's also, um, there is, let's say I highlight a word, there is also a dictionary. And watch this, any word that I bring up with the dictionary, they have all these play buttons next to it. Adverb, in a lower position or place, the seats below me were Pretty cool, hey? Uh, so there's a dictionary. There's a picture dictionary. Whoops, a picture dictionary. There it is. And here's a pro tip, everyone. Have you seen the picture dictionary before? Um, so this is the icon for below. Pro tip. 
if you open up the picture dictionary, you can drag and drop these pictures from the picture dictionary into your Google Doc. Okay, might be useful, you never know. So um, anyways, that is the picture dictionary, the dictionary. There are also tools that help people focus. Look at this one here, the screen mask, watch this. Boom, it helps me. Anybody ever have a ruler to read a novel, right? When you were younger, you were kids, some people had the colored acetate, that is handy. Okay, there are highlighter buttons here. There's a few other ones here um, as well. Uh, I wanna show you a, a feedback tool in, that's built into Google Docs. This, I'm, we're gonna put a pause in the read and write instruction here because I'm gonna build on this comments feature that Google Docs has, okay? So let's say I highlight some text. Do you see this thing pop open here? When you get Google Docs from students, you can highlight any of their work if you'd like to leave a comment on it and just hit this plus button. Really handy way you type a comment. Good work. That's a terrible comment because it's not that specific, right? It's not helping them learn. But let's imagine now when they open up that, they can hit the reply button. You can have a back and forth conversation. It's a good way to give feedback to students. Now, how does that relate to what we're talking about in the read and write toolbar? Well, it does. Uh, there is a way I can leverage this. Uh, yes, I believe they do get an email notification when there have been comments. But if you're communicating back and forth through Google Classroom, when you make your comments and then you return the work to them, they'll be able to see those comments. Remember, when they turn in work in Google Classroom, they lose editing privilege on that document. They have view only. And that means they can't see any, doc any comments that you have in the right margin until you return their work. And you can go back and forth. They can return, 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 unsubmit, submit. Uh, they can, you can go back and forth with this, such as the living doc. Anyways, remember the comments piece, right? We highlight something, this little button shows up over here to add a comment. Watch what you can do in Read and Write Toolbar. At the very top, second to the right, there's a thing called a voice note. It is awesome. I can leave, or my students can leave, up to a one minute audio comment per comment. I can do 10 of these on a single document if I feel like it. So this is my audio comment to your work. Okay, I can play it back so I can hear it or I, whenever I'm ready, I can hit the insert, insert button. Now, when it first comes into the Google Doc, what you'll notice is it's this whole hodgepodge of, uh, of a really crazy hyperlink. But you'll see what happens when I put my mouse over it. Come on. Don't fail me now. See how that looks kind of gross, but watch what happens when I put my mouse over it. Boom, it turns into a play button. And when I play it, this is my audio comment to your... So there it is. So it's a really handy thing, handy way to communicate back with students and give feedback. And I'll tell you, it's probably a lot faster way to give feedback than typing your comments to the student. It's just using your voice. If you've got a microphone built into a laptop or you have a headset mic, you can rip through a lot of student comments using this audio feature. And guess what? If they have, let's say they're working off their phones, they're secondary level, they've got an iPhone or an Android phone. Uh, if they have the Google Docs app installed on their mobile device, they can hear that audio comment, no problem. So uh, voice notes is a really handy tool. So those are just a few of the uh, reading supports. There's also a writing support. I'm gonna just scroll down here, give myself a little space to write, come on, there we go. Well, let's go down here. All right, here's another really awesome tool in the Read and Write toolbar. It is a writing suggestions, okay? And uh, if I look up at the top, second from the left is something that looks like a crystal ball. And when I hit it, up will pop these writing suggestions. And so I could say one, day I was, I wanna say one day I was walking. Hmm. One day I was, and if you'll see on my screen, it's going to give words that would make sense to come next. Well, I know that walking starts with a W. So as I push the W, there are a whole bunch of W verbs that would make sense, okay? Now guess what? Watch what happens when I put my mouse over these words. Wondering, working, watching, watching. Oh, I thought that was walking. No, nope, that's not it. Walking. Ah, oh, there it is. So I can click on it and it'll pop it right in, or I can just finish the typing myself. This can be turned on, it can be turned off. 
okay, as you, as you need it. Um, the other thing to note is, and we don't have time to go a whole bunch into the settings. This is something for you to explore. If you have the read and write toolbar and you'd like to learn more about it, in, when that toolbar is open, go to these three dots and go to options. Because what you can do, is, and teach kids how to do this too, you can slow down that speed or speed it up, okay? Uh, so if they have written a paragraph and they want to hear it back, but they want it a little bit slower, they can just drag it from less than 50 and then it will go slower. They can also change the voice. Now this can get a little bit crazy. You want to make sure it's an English, if you're using the English language, you want to make sure it's an English voice, okay? Now, if you are working in uh, French or Spanish, for example, you can go down to the language options and change the language from English to Espanol or Francais. You've got a couple other ones here, but for our uh, Alberta schools, probably English, Spanish, and French are the most common ones. So you could change the language and the voice to a French one, and then if you've got French text or Spanish text, it will do that literacy support in Spanish or French as well. Now, this might be worthy of an entire session itself, this uh, read and write toolbar. Um, so if that's of interest, let me know, um, and we might be able to do another. But again, look on this page here that I had sent you, ECSD Read and Write, uh, from that Edmonton Catholic team, and you'll see a lot of different uh, things that you may forget right now. So that is the main part of it. Uh, the final thing I'll share with you with the Read and Write toolbar is the um, this thing, this check it button. It will check this document. You'll start to see, you have to give it a few seconds, and what you'll see are some purple, I don't even know if there are any, are any things here, okay? So uh, I made a couple of spelling and grammar errors in this, um, and what you'll see is when you hover over one of these things, when the check mark, the check it button is on, it will give you other options here, okay? It'll even do things, uh, I went over there to see the dog. Now, when I have this uh, check it button on, it will even do things, I spelled the word there correctly, but it's the wrong use of the word there. So we'll even correct things like word usage. Uh, so capitalization, punctuation, um, it'll, it'll collect, correct a lot of that. So there's a lot of functionality in that read and write toolbar. And we have nine minutes left, so I wanna show you a couple of additional add-ons and extensions, okay? Um, here is one, let's go up in the Google Docs menu here. You'll see second from the right is something called add-ons. These are like little apps or extensions that just work for Google Docs. Google Slides has some add-ons, Google Forms has some add-ons. Well, uh, Google Sheets has some as well, but this is these are just for Google Docs. So I'm gonna go to document add-ons. You'll see almost, oh, my bad. Uh, you're gonna go to get add-ons. And this will open up almost like a little Chrome web store just for Google Docs. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. One I wanna point out to you is called Easy Accents. Any language teachers here who get frustrated with the idea, and I'm gonna hit install for Easy Accents. Anybody here get frustrated with the fact that finding, if you're a Spanish teacher or a French teacher, um, and you just have to go through and give it some permissions here, um, and hit allow. Basically, what it does when I'm done, I'm gonna close this out. And what this one will do, easy accents, come on. Come on, Google. We've only got eight minutes left. So now what I can do is I can go to my add-ons menu and go to easy accents, start. And what it'll do is it'll pop open on the right side of my screen. And I'll select the language, let's say French. And what will happen is all of these special characters will pop up. So anywhere I want to talk, come on. Now instead of ça, I'm going to hit this little button right here. Brings it, see how it brought it in on my screen? 
Comment ça va? So um, this is a handy way. Um, you can teach students about this as well um, to use this if they want to do some writing. So this could help with you or your students as well. So e easy accents is a good one. Let's see what other ones I have. There's another one called extensus fonts. Okay, if you go again to that add-ons menu um, and check it, look for it. If you want more fonts, then they're even there. And there are a lot already built in when you see the more fonts feature, but this extensus font will give you even more. So it too will open up as a sidebar. Let me just go to extensus fonts, start. All right, check it out. There's a whole bunch of them. Come on, it's showing all fonts alphabetically. You can show different versions of this. So it'll give you a whole bunch and it'll just show you what those fonts look like. Here we go. So, wow, some of these look really super cool. So whichever ones you want, you can just uh, highlight something and then hit that font and it will change it to that font, okay? So it's a really handy way to uh, get a whole bunch more fonts uh, available. So if you prefer this over the, when I go up to a font now, look at that, it's in my, it's in my fonts list too now. Now I don't even have to open up this extensus fonts next time I want this Alex Brush, I think it was called. So there are several different fonts in there to add even more fonts to your, I don't know if they're, oh, interline, wouldn't that be nice for printing practice? I'm not sure. Uh, so I apologize for that, April, um, but that's a great suggestion. Uh, here's another extension I want to share with you. Now, normally I don't share extensions that eventually will cost you something. I like free things, but this one might be such a great time saver that it is possibly worth it for you. Regardless, you can get a 10-day free trial, so you can blow your brains out with comments for 10 days for free. Okay? Sorry, I shouldn't have said blow your brains. Anyways, uh, this extension is called eComments, okay? And I'll just play this short video here so you can get a sense of what it does. Save time and provide better writing feedback with the eComments Chrome extension. Insert hundreds of instructional comments automatically into Google Docs and Slides. Customize, add, and record your own audio, video, and speech-to-text comments. So this was made by uh, an English teacher, and when I go into here, I have downloaded and installed eComments. By the way, I'll give you the link. Here is the eComments link. If you would like to try this out from the Chrome Web Store. Now, in my Google Doc, I'm going to click the eComments up here and I'm going to turn it on. What you'll see happen is there's a whole whack of comments. A whole bunch of different things and you can edit this to make it less if this is too much. Uh, so let's say I want to insert one of those comments here. They've got story structure and content, uh, revised story lead, setting, conflict, point of view. So let's say they have written a story. I could just click on that and watch. It just pops it right in. I'm going to zoom out to 100% and you'll see, hang on, where did that happen? Uh, let's try that again. So I'm going to click on that. Let's say it's a sentence fragment and I'm just going to hit. Sometimes if it's not working, just refresh your browser, okay? That sometimes will work. Um, I've had that work with, happen with e-comments a couple of times where it's for whatever reason isn't uh, inserting those comments, just hit refresh in your browser. So now I'm going to try this again. Click on that, let's say it's a sentence fragment. So I click on that and boom, there it is. This whole comment is in there for, for kids and it gives them that comment. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. You can even at any point in time, you can even insert uh, an audio comment with your microphone or a video comment with your webcam and it saves these files in your Google Drive, not on some e-comment server. And so, uh, please note that if you do a video comment, okay, if I click the webcam here, let me see if I can, it's on my other screen, so that's not going to work. Uh, just know that when you do a video comment, it takes a few minutes for that video to render, such that if a student clicks on that link as soon as you do the video comment, it'll, they'll say the video is still processing. Anyhow, 
Uh, those are a couple of um, extensions that can add additional functionality. And so let's just see if there are any other final things I can share with you. We've looked through all this. Those links I sent you from uh, the Concordia course that I teach uh, will have in videos on how to do these things. And um, there's some of these extensions I was telling you about for the read and write and so on. Um, this second page on feedback will give you some more feedback options in terms of add-in comments, voice notes, as I mentioned, a video showing you how. Uh, there's also something we didn't cover called suggesting mode. Um, we didn't even look at how to insert uh, a comment bank with using Google Keep, but that's another possibility. Here's that e-comments extension I was showing you. Uh, Screencastify, some teachers are taking student work and in order to give feedback on it, they are using the Screencastify tool to record their entire screen, such that they have the student document open, they're recording their entire screen, maybe even their webcam if they want to, so recording the desktop, and then um, giving that feedback. So if I were to do that very quickly, this will be my last demo here. Let's say I record the screen very quickly to give some feedback for the student. Okay, I'm gonna hit record and I'll select my screen. It'll give me a three second countdown. Come on, three, two, one. All right, this is my feedback I'm giving you on your Google Doc. Thank you very much. So as soon as I hit the stop button on that recording, uh, as soon as I hit the stop button on that recording, what it will do is open up in a brand new tab. It will open up this uh, Doc. Thank you very much. The video comments. Here's the student's Google Doc. Now I can click this copy shareable link. See it? Now I can go in there. Remember how to make comments in a Google Doc? I could say, click here for video feedback. And remember, when I and I'm going to paste control V and there is their link to their video feedback so here was in Google uh, in screencastify that button copy shareable link and bingo uh, now I can just paste it in that document as a comment and now they can click on it and they can watch that video feedback that I just did in screencastify so it is 10 o'clock and uh, we've covered a lot here today so I'm gonna stop the recording.